and welcome to the second of two videos where we've been exploring removing color casts from our images. Now in the first video we used this image and we used Photoshop Elements Remove Color Cast tool where we were asked to select areas of either grey, white or black. We ended up with grey, let's just take a look, uh, this is the image with color cast. We then selected grey from this point here which Remove the color cast there. We drop down the opacity to 71% and just finishing off with a little bit of hue saturation there to give us our finished image. As you can see, that did a really good job removing the color cast. But then with this picture, there are plenty of blacks, whites, and grays to select. Now back over with this image, trying to find grays, whites, and blacks is going to be a little bit trickier. However, this is where my favorite technique comes in. One thing I did forget to mention, both are raw files. You'll notice they are both .dng. I prefer to remove the color cast in Photoshop Elements. I find it much easier. I find it much better than doing it in Camera Raw in Photoshop Elements. Right, now we can get on with it. Over to the Layers panel, we're going to put in a new empty layer. We're going to fill this empty layer with 50% grey. So we're going to head up to the edit menu, coming down to fill layer. There is a really nifty shortcut. Shift backspace, that's shift and backspace on a PC. It is shift delete, that shift delete on a Mac will bring up the fill layer dialog box. Use a bit of a clue from the fly up menu, select 50% grey. We're now going to click OK. We're going to change the blend mode from normal we're going to have a look at difference. Now with difference, we need to find the darkest points. And to help us out, we can go to an adjustment layer of thresholds. Think of this very much in the same way that you would with a histogram in levels. These are the highlights, the whites. These are the shadows, the darkest points. So let's grab hold of the slider, take it all the way over to the left. Now we can start to move it in. As we start to move it in, we are looking for clumps of black. So here and here look pretty good. Taking it just a little bit further into this region here, you can see a few more beginning to form. Just gonna push it a wee bit more. That will do nicely. Right, next we need to put down some marker points. So let's put in a new empty layer. We're gonna come over to the toolbox, clicking on the foreground color. Now under the color picker, I'm gonna select red and we're going to click OK to that. Picking up paintbrush, coming down to tool options. I've got a hard edge brush. It is 37 pixels. Make sure the opacity is 100% and just drop that down out of the way. Now the first clump of blacks was over here. So I'm going to click down there. Let's come to the second clump of blacks to form, which was here. So let's click down on that over onto the grass, which is here, there was another clump there which I noticed forming early. And finally, let's check this one out here. I've got a feeling that's just right by the wall. Let's switch these off. And there are our five little markers. You can put in as many markers as you like. Right, for the next stage, make sure you're on the background layer because you need to put the adjustment layer of levels underneath the marker layer. We're going to pick up the little eyedropper tool here in the middle, which is to set the gray point. So that's the middle eyedropper tool. And because it's underneath that marker layer, if it was on top, you would be selecting the red. But we're now on that uh, gray for the roof, but that isn't really working. No. Taking a look at the fence post over here, that looks better. Just moving it around a little bit. But as I'm moving it around, we still have green in the picture. There's still a green hue, particularly in the tree trunks there, you can see, and around the rest of the image. Let's have a look at the grass. As we click down, no, there's a lot of magenta coming in, but what is the opposite color of magenta? The opposite color is green, so this could work. Let's take a look at this one over by the wall there. That looks pretty good. I think it's going to be a toss up between that one and that one. I think we're going to go with this. Right, let's head up to the opacity slider. Let's drop down the opacity. As I'm starting to drop down the opacity, 
there that looks really good like that taking it a little bit further i'm just looking at the tree trunk i want to make sure i haven't got magenta in it and i want to make sure i haven't got green in it and in that region there like the way that's looking okay we don't need these layers anymore so let's click on layer one press shift on the keyboard come up to layer two click down because you held down shift all three are highlighted press delete or click on the little bin that's going to bring up the delete selected layers question mark yes they've gone i think the colors look just a little bit flat so let's come to an adjustment layer of hue saturation Let's take the saturation up to this region. Here it looks good. What have we got? We've got plus 11. Come into master. Red. I don't want to increase the red. The reason being the farmhouse over here is red enough as it is. The picture was taken at a place called St. Fagans, which is a museum of life. It is just outside Cardiff in South Wales here in the UK. The buildings are very old buildings, farmhouses, there's other farm buildings here. There's also a few, uh, there's like a workingman's club which has been reassembled from up in the valleys. They're buildings, old buildings, taken stone by stone, rebuilt, absolutely fantastic place to visit. Let's take a look at yellows though. I'm gonna pick up the eyedropper tool because I want to sample the yellows over here. Autumn was just beginning, just starting to get the first flush of uh, yellows, or autumn colors forming in the leaves you can see a few on the ground as well so let's click down there you may have noticed the way that slider jumped around let's grab hold of this let's move this back and forth see what we're working with there that looks pretty good you can see the tree just by that red farmhouse the colors around here that's a bit too much though so let's rein it back into this region let's have a look at green once again, grab hold of the slider, whack it back and forth. Don't forget, this is totally non-destructive. So you can see the way the colors, the tones, and what it's actually working with. Taking this into this region and coming to cyan. This area here is what I'm after. It's blue. Right, let's move the saturation slider up a touch or two. We now have blue too. Moving blue too back and forth. What have we got? We have got, you can see top left hand corner, got that area of sky I was originally looking at, so just taking that up slightly. Let's have a look at magenta. Uh, magenta, do we have magentas in the picture? Yes, it is the roofs, the thatch roofs here and here. Not sure I like the way that looks, so I'm going to leave that set on zero. Coming back to master, having a look, switching the visibility off. There it is. And there it is with the hue saturation, just giving the image a bit of a lift. There it is with the color cast, removing the color cast using levels. Don't forget we use the gray little eyedropper tool there and we've reduced the opacity down to 56%, finishing off with hue saturation. Go on, give it a try. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Give it the thumbs up if you have. Don't forget to subscribe as well as there's plenty more videos to come. But until the next time, it is happy imaging and take care.